We're live. I don't know if they can hear you though, but we're we're in. We got we got a special guest today. Uh, we got Marshawn Lynch. No, uh, it's it's Ross, my buddy Ross, uh, hanging out, and uh, we're gonna talk about clerics. It's gonna be super exciting. Um, hopefully, it might suck because clerics suck. Honestly, I hate class. I hate the class cleric. Uh, I think it's silly. It has one of the worst game mechanics attached to it. It's famous for this particular game mechanic, and I think it's the worst one. And that is uh, healing. Uh, healing's the worst thing, and uh, I I don't like it when people heal. And we're gonna talk about why. Um, eventually, we'll get there. But no, no, I don't. I don't want to come out of the gate just like throwing all this hate down on clerics. I really don't hate them that much. Um, I, I just, I just hate on healing. I hate whenever there's like this really uh, kind of intense moment going on and everybody's fighting for survival, and then the clerics just like I heal everybody, and it's like ah oh, man, and then it's like just resolve too quickly. Um, that's just me. And we'll talk about that more. We'll talk about healing and some, some ways and stuff and things that I think maybe healing could shake out a little bit differently. And uh, we'll hear from Ross, who I think maybe likes clerics. I think overall people like clerics, to be honest. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, I got to switch over the channel thingy. Let's make sure we can see. Let's see if we can. Oh, there we go. Now talk, Ross. Maybe they can hear you now. Should be all able right. To. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for uh, you know having me in here. Uh, I do like clerics, and I'm here to kind of defend at least the concept of a cleric in you know a fantasy space or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I think definitely on the subject of healing, uh, you and I will be able to find some common ground because I think just as a DM and as a player, I think it's the wrong. Uh, just like the wrong vibe for what you want a, a, a combat encounter to be whenever you just have one dude sitting in the back just like trying to yeah trying to sp spray some heels forward instead of doing things that really kind of are like make narrative sense yeah exactly exactly so uh, let's hang on to that stuff here let's let's start at the beginning right let's kind of start uh, and maybe this is like my first place where I can start uh, griping about the cleric. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, wings above wings above says that we're, we're clear. Um, my first gripe, maybe I think with the clerics, maybe I'm just a dummy or I didn't spend enough time on, uh, Wikipedia, uh, to figure this out. But like, what actually is a cleric? Like historically, you know what I'm saying? Like what for real? Like I have no idea. Like, are they supposed to be like a crusader? Like, do you know Ross? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I think the cleric just comes from the idea of like the clergy. And I think probably there's a, there's a similar root word there. If you went back far enough, right? right. So you're talking about some sort of man of the cloth concept, right? This is a person yeah. devoted to a specific day. Yeah. Man but of I, the I don't cloth, necessary... man of the cloth. So why is he wearing armor? Right? Like why, why is the armored cleric an, an iconic thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's. It, it doesn't really like make a whole lot of sense. Like what the cleric does and what they're supposed to kind of mm -hmm. represent. There's definitely a sort of a clash there in my opinion. Yeah, I hear you. I don't know how far back that particular trope runs. Right. So like I, I am not well versed in eighties editions of, of dungeons and dragons and similar game systems. Right. So I don't know if that's something that's original or if they, added that in later because just like wizards were cooler back in the day so they needed to like give the cleric something i i don't know the you know? the closest thing i heard about it was it was a dave arneson thing and dave arneson pretty much just thought it would be cool i don't know if that's true or not <laughs> i heard I'd buy that, that if third hand do you want to just go with that for for the pod yeah, I mean, that that's true. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, that's probably how it went. Like, Good. you know, Gary or uh, Dave, uh, you know, one of those guys was probably like, this dude should be armor armored. They're like a armored priest. I think it kind of makes sense if they're going for that whole crusader kind of vibe. Um, you know, like it, like crusader though, you definitely immediately think paladin, right? But paladins, as far as additions go, that that all came later. Uh, but Cleric's been there since the very beginning. Cleric was like, you know, since first edition, right at the, right up there with fighting man and magic user. You know, you had uh, Cleric. 
as like far also as I know. elf or something, or, right? Yeah, and like elf and dwarf and thief, yeah. I think, right? I hope I'm right on that. I that could entirely right. be wrong. Um, but fighting, I love fighting man. It's just such an evocative image, like compared to fighter, you know, like. I think I've maybe met a couple fighters, but I've definitely seen some fighting men. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, that's that's you know, as far as I know, that's that's the game history. That's sort of where they came from. They've been there since the beginning. They knew they were going to be important. They've, as far as I know, they've always had armor, which is one of the things that I think is really weird. Um, let's keep going. So let's talk about like uh. uh the, their role in the game which uh again just kind of like tip of the iceberg here uh of my hatred for them is that healing right everybody knows it everybody knows that clerics if you're playing a cleric it's like oh i'm the healer if you're playing the cleric you have to be the healer right like there's no there's no other way around it like if you're a warlock or something people I think maybe nowadays, because of video games and stuff, people expect you to sort of be like this damage machine, right? And uh, but like prior to that, you could be like a thief or like a, or like a rogue or something, and people are like, oh, he's gonna do like sure, he's gonna do skill based stuff, but also he's gonna have this whole like other persona. But like I feel like when you say that you're rolling up that cleric, it's like you are just the healer, and that is all you really do right like that's it's it it is also part of your personality that you're like this support guy and and that's like the end of it right i don't know that's how i feel about it at least have you seem to have any similar experiences in any of your games ross yeah personally personally i think that uh your um kind of pointing a very general finger toward like the the advent of like role-playing video games is definitely something that yeah. plays a role here right that mm-hmm. that's like prior to that if you wanted to play a cleric and you were just kind of a holy man and maybe you actually played it as just like a like a like a traveler right and you were some sort of um you know evangelist or proselytizer or something like that and that you could play up the devotee to a particular deity mm-hmm. sort of thing right mm-hmm. and these days as soon as people say cleric then what they hear is priest and then immediately you are the healer and then they start saying things will like well now we need a tank and then i start to have like oh, very small aneurysms right as yeah. soon as we start to get into that level of like breaking down a concept right because that's that's poor in in tabletop systems yeah 100 percent. i i agree with you completely on that um consider the hospitaler yeah hospitalers are definitely uh uh like a, a part i think historically somewhat right i i, I was reading something too uh, wings above through something in here about the uh history of the cleric i also yeah. read something about this archbishop i guess that that maybe like gary and dave were like basing the cleric off of there used to be this archbishop um who was like kind of known to be like a fighting man type of dude but also was an archbishop um in like 764 ad you know um but then the funny part about him though too and this goes with uh something you were just saying ross about being a uh, devotee um is he was like renowned for being like a bad dude and like regularly like stole from the church and like you know did a did a lot of bad stuff and was not known for his faith at all as the archbishop um and I think that's another thing that we see a lot of is uh, you mentioned like pros- pro- proselytizing. Like how many times have you seen a player really like do some stuff that's that's dedicated to their deity and not just like people will do things as like a thinly veiled excuse for it to yeah. be related to their deity. But like I feel like nobody really plays like uh, uh, like an evangelical kind of cleric, you know, and that's kind of what they're supposed to be a lot of the time you know yeah i think there's actually two reasons for that that i see a lot and number one is sometimes players look at that and say boy wouldn't that be annoying if we had one of those in the party and then they don't do it because they do you know for the same reason that people don't play the zealous paladin but they play the paladin who's like the kind of like 
every man's sort of folk hero style. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that probably is for the same reason, right? You, that in general, when you have kind of experienced groups, and maybe this is just limited to my own experience, yeah. but whenever you have kind of good experienced groups, people tend to play things that they know will kind of get along with what their friends are doing, right? right? So if you're just continuing to play something that's obnoxious in every RP scenario, then that's probably not great. That's true. And then on like the other hand, I think that specifically with fifth editions kind of continued gutting of the existence of religion as a core facet of the game, mm-hmm. then I think that there's also just been a devaluation of like uh, you know, the need to know who your deity is. Like I, pl- I play with players all the time who don't have a deity picked out, right? They'll maybe have a domain or something, but right. even if they're other classes, they don't have a deity. They don't have a good sense of like personal ideology mm-hmm. because a lot of that stuff has gone away in favor of the easy to roll up like flaws and bonds system. Right. And I think that, that that does plenty of good things, but when you're trying to play something that is like s- explicitly a religious figure, I think you lose something in the flavor of the class by just saying, well, that's not important anymore. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you there too. I think it's funny that you brought up about um, people playing the paladin as the folk hero, because I'm pretty sure the only person who actually does that is Sam. Uh, <laughs> I could that's kind wrong. of also the way that I play mine. And I have, yeah. I have one or two other ones in gr- in other groups that I have oh, where nice. they kind of pay a little bit of lip service to the idea that they are in some sort of order but I've started to see my players going toward, well, I belong to a martial order, right? Not like I'm not affiliated with a church, right? I just kind of have this code of conduct. Right, right. No, that's fair. I think that's that's probably, that sounds about right. Oh, gosh. What else? So I I made this list like 15 minutes ago, pretty much before we starting and before we started and before I ate this, uh, this frying pan full of eggs that I made real quick because I hadn't eaten all day. Um, so this list is pretty thin. The next thing on it, though, is healing in combat is bad, right? And this is the uh, kind of number one. This is this is it, right? So this is the part. This is why I wrote, uh, you know, the worst class in D&D, so on and so forth for the title of this video. Um, healing is bad, in combat, and this is like what clerics are known for. And this, um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go here, and I'm just gonna like straight up blame video games for that idea. Um, you know, if you're trying to move the story forward in the game, which is again, this is like one of the central things that uh, tabletop RPGs will always be able to do better. I think, I hope so, um, than like video games, right? Is that the person who's running the game is a real life person and they they're they're not necessarily going on what's scripted and they probably know at least a little bit who they're gaming with and they can uh, on the fly tailor the game to the people that you're, they're playing with right so if you're trying to like move this story forward um whether you want the um players to like succeed at the combat that they're having or fail or whatever um if if your players are constantly getting their hit points replenished in combat then combat is always going to happen the same way right it's going to be people swing right maybe they get hit a little bit the cleric heals them blah 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 and and that's pretty much how every combat's gonna go right because they're always gonna have that dude in the background uh, uh, restoring their hit points, right? And then if you start to really ramp up the encounters to kind of counteract that, to encourage some ingenuity, to uh, make it so that your players can't just stand in front of one monster and swing at it and, and fight it straight on, then uh, the players start to feel like, oh, well, like, you know, you're you're a mean GM or like you're you're a bad game master because, or, you know, like you're you're too hard of a game master or you're just trying to kill the party and like this and that. It's like, no, I want to see like a combat that plays out in a way that is different than the fighter standing in the front of the monster than the rogue standing in the back, the spellcaster doing something crazy on the side, and then, like, this cleric just standing back and punching things. This is great in video games. Very, very fun in video games. But um, 
I I think that if you've been playing D and D longer than a year, um, you're playing D and D for very different reasons than you play a video game, right? Um, I hope that sounded right, at least vaguely. I don't disagree with anything you said, so Ooh. you know. Ooh, wow. Either either it was good or we're both wrong, right? I yeah, yeah. I don't think we're both wrong. I really don't. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, right. It's like you want, you should have like these combats where you just escape by the skin of your teeth and oh, proselytize, proselytizing and even gentleness for the paladin. You think so? You really think that the paladin is more of like the proselytizer? I think that the paladin is like more of like the businessman or like the dude, like the businessman, not that he's opening up a business, but meaning like he's going to go out there and fight stuff for the church. Whereas the cleric is like there to take care of the church and like build its organization and lead the church. And then the paladin goes out there and like, you know, fights and extends the reach of the church, right? Like a crusader. Uh, at least that's my take on it. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, right? Like clerics, man, just healing everybody up. And then your combat's always going to go the same way. And it's always just going to be like, Oh man, super glad that, you know, our healing cleric had that one spell left, you know, and there's there's just not going to be a uh, a lot of variety to to what's happening. You know, you need to have encounters that that the players steamroll. You need to have encounters where the players um uh, like barely escape, barely escape by the skin of their teeth. Um you want to have things that go unplanned, right? Where um you know, if you're if you're a wounded fighter and suddenly like you don't you don't have a, a, a cleric there, it's a lot more interesting if you have to make this choice of am I going to stay toe to toe and maybe drop or am I going to like back up and start shooting things with my bow? Like people should have to make those choices in the game because I think that's what makes the game fun. Right. That's that's what makes the game interesting, at least is is making different choices as the player, not just repeating the same thing again and again i don't know though that's not true some people are really into that grind i suppose <sighs> frustrating frustrating but uh i think this maybe leads us into our next part ross um when do you think it would be appropriate to have healing take place right i'm not saying that healing shouldn't be part of a game you know but like, do you think it should just be like a downtime activity? Um, I I like uh, spells such as like healing spirit, yeah, and stuff like that. Right, where the intent is after the combat is over, you can quickly patch people up, and there is a non-trivial cost associated. Right, this isn't something that you're going to be able to at you know early to mid levels. You're not going to be able to get six to eight of these out a day. Mm -hmm. But two or three of them to help offset maybe a couple of higher level encounters, I'm good with. Yeah. I'm also of the opinion that just like instead of straight up healing spells, if the devs for specifically fifth edition had gotten a little bit more creative with ways that um, a holy man could offer up a protective blessing. I think yeah. that stuff like that is cool. Like, I, I like aid. I really like aid. I think aid is one of my favorite spells in the cleric kit because it feels like a thing a cleric should do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's providing additional toughness to the party members, but not in a way that disrupts the flow of a combat, right? Because you do it at the beginning of the day. Yeah. And then you just have that, and that's good. And you know you're happy to have that going forward. I really, really, really dislike Healing Word. Healing Word, I think, is actually, yeah. like, not, like, game-breaking for me, but it's very immersion-breaking. Yeah. That just, like, all of a sudden you're able to, you know, kind of just say uh, one quick prayer and somebody at distance can stand up, right? Because that's, that's for me, that's the kind of, like, really, really immersion-breaking thing with healing. Yeah. Yep. Isn't isn't whenever someone has 20 hit points and they get healed and now they have 35. It's when someone who has been totally felled mm -hmm. and the party has to make a quick decision. Do we run? Do we try to like get to him and drag him out of there? Do we try and just finish this thing off this round? It's when the cleric says, no, guys, don't worry about it. I have 
I have a button because this is a video game and I have a button that says he's okay. Let me press it. Right. Yep. And then you do it. And then the party says, okay, well, actually the, uh, you know, as, as wings is pointing out in chat, the having clerics does lead to kind of this kind of first order thinking though. Right. Where it's just mm -hmm. kind of, you, you do the, you do the good thing all the time. And mm -hmm. so the party quickly realizes that just like cure wounds is not efficient. It's much more efficient to just let our guy get bopped and then we'll just healing word him and get him back up. And then he's cool because even though he only has four HP, that's really not a consideration in this edition. If he gets bopped the next turn, we also just healing word him again, right? Yep. And that's like fine. And this is like a reasonable strategy for us to employ. Yeah. And then as you describe all of that stuff, literally none of that has anything to do with the story taking place, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is then just like triple, yep. triple aggravation right there. No, yeah. I, I agree. I think healing word is is the devil. I think it's, I the, think worst. it's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the problem. Yeah. I specifically don't take it. Um, I like I'll take like sanctuary. I'll take aid. Um, I wish that there were more spells that offered just some sort of like thing that looks like mitigation, right? Yeah, um, it could be cast before combat. I think that's what I would really like. That's. I think if the, if you look at the cleric as like a preemptive healer, then it gets cooler, right? And some video games have like kind of recognized this this issue. And they will build in things that aren't healing, but kind of work as damage mitigation. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure why 5th edition decided to kind of be a video game, but then ignore all that stuff. I I, I agree 100%. And especially with what you're saying about like doing things that would be like protective wards and yeah, stuff like yeah. that cast before combat. That's literally yeah. I was thinking of the same sort of thing. And yeah, I, I get it that you can't, you know, there are restrictions for for gameplay balance. You know, they don't want just a party of like six clerics to walk up and everybody has precast all the buffs on everybody else and that it's not fun anymore. Right. But at the same time, you know, how how silly would it be to allow me to like upcast something like Shield of Faith mm -hmm. and then upcast it maybe and target more than one friend or, or something like this, you know, or, or do the same with Sanctuary or, or something like that. I don't know. Right. No, I, you're totally on to something there. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, I think Dominic, that's pretty wild, and I'm here for it. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's cool. I think I'm gonna have people start rolling death saves immediately whenever they drop. Like you drop and you immediately roll yeah. your first death save, and then I'm into mm -hmm. like lingering death saves a lot. Yeah, I'm into lingering failures, right? That just like if you get picked <laughs> back up, you can only do so well right yeah or like um that uh that death save doesn't go away yeah, right so yeah, if you exactly. fail it yeah it stays with you yeah you could you could maybe take like a legitimate long rest in a bed somewhere and get like some hot soup and then maybe it goes away nah nah dude but it doesn't go like away it, the only way to get rid of it is you have to take a permanent injury <laughs> permanent injury dom Dom's lost uh, his his uh, character in Lands Below. John has definitely lost an eye uh, because of that good. rule, and probably plenty of sanity too. Um, he's had some That's really good. great, great insanity mm -hmm. moments going on. Um, but yeah, man, no, I I agree. Then that kind of goes in with my other thing that I had written down here, which is other healing mechanics, other health mechanics, and yeah. ways of healing and. Uh, ways of clerics just... should give out more temp hp there i said it yeah i think temp hp would be cool i think it would be a lot of fun yeah, not just aid right because yeah. aid's not temp hp aid is like a an increase to the max hp where the point is that they can then heal it back later so aid is like the gift that keeps on giving right i just want them to be able to like give somebody a really quick you know temp hp that like fades after the next round but you can give it out to like somebody that might take a big hit mm -hmm. and i think stuff like that might be more in line because that is a, a little bit more narratively substantive i think than just saying okay well the cleric just kind of like sits here and then just lays on hands and then all of a sudden this guy's fine yeah no i i would agree to that i think too i think it would be cool to have like uh, uh just kind of like spread out that responsibility i, I want to see stuff that like breaks um these these like uh, uh party roles that have come about because of like mmos and stuff like the tank and the dps and the healer and all that sort of crap and it's like you know maybe rather than having a a, a healer you have like the abjurer wizard the abjurist wizard 
who like projects this big field that everybody like uh-huh. stands behind and you know uh-huh. his whole thing is that he's constantly like trying to pump his power into this field and keep it going up as a uh, you know people fight i'm imagining almost mm-hmm. like uh in a much cooler way i don't even want to say it never mind i'm taking it all back no okay uh, well as it turns out i think that's not that far off from what is it the psychic warrior that got printed in tasha's yeah um, the psychic i think, warrior I think so they don't get like a field per se but i think they can throw a shield over two allies kind of in the same way that like an abjurer can by expending some of their dice yeah and offhand so the abjurer can do that kind of stuff but like only at higher levels right that's like not quite their baseline ability they have to describe the ward first and then do it later yeah but you know, and then um also there's something that's not so different in the ancestral barbarian kit as well no oh, dang um which is which is pretty guys. cool uh, that one, that one, I think you will find in Xanathar's guide. But that one, that one's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm all in favor of these sorts of things. But I do agree that those are more flavorful other places, mm-hmm. and not just in kind of this like holy man idea. No, definitely, definitely. And uh, holy cow! Oh, dude, we're blowing through these. But uh, here's another one for you. And this kind of, we touched on this one a little bit, but this idea of the clerics being a servant of the deity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of talked about not, a lot of players don't really play that out that much. Yeah. And one thing that definitely happens, and this kind of goes with uh, one of my overall problems with magic in general, right? So I believe like magic should be this like really wild kind of force that is a little bit unpredictable it's it's super dangerous right like that's why everybody just doesn't do magic you know people spend their whole lives that's why wizards are always old that's why like you know in the older editions and stuff the um like starting age for wizards was always like higher because you had to spend years of of your life like learning the art learning the craft uh to be able to to be able to do it you know it wasn't just something that everybody could spring up and and pull off um those people were sorcerers and they were also bad people. Um, but especially with clerics too, right? Like as a cleric, your deity, just your power comes from your deity and they answer your prayers and grant, grant you powers 100% of the time, right? Like there's no, there's no like prayer mishap. There's no like your prayer just doesn't happen or something like that. It's just like, you have a direct line to your deity and they're always like granting you sweet, sweet miracles every single day, right? Which, I don't know, that doesn't sound, that sounds like the deity is serving the cleric, not the cleric serving the deity. And I think, I think I would like to see some kind of mechanic that like reflects that in some way, right? Yeah, so I think it's explicitly stated in a couple of places that, like, under certain circumstances, you know, your deity might not be able to be reachable, right? Yeah. But that's almost always at the DM's, uh, you know, discretion. And And if you did that, your players are going to be like, you're being a dick, dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. You know, you're you're opening up. Got them right on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of that stuff. I think it would be wild to just like run curse of Strahd and then just assert that because it's like a pocket dimension demi plane that like your deity <laughs> literally has no power here and the cleric has no spells. Right. I love that. That would, that that would be, be absolutely wild. Yeah. Um, I'm about to run curse of Strahd here coming up soon. So, uh, curse yeah. of Strahd players, if you're getting in on that, uh, look out, it's going to be ugly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm also in favor of maybe kind of taking a long hard look at the way that works. I wouldn't be opposed, but I think also if you just strip all of that away baseline, then the cleric is left with absolutely nothing. That's true. That's true. So, you know, that if you're running something that's a particularly kind of fatiguing sort of game state where, you know, you're really really chasing the players down because of some, you know, external uh force or event Mm -hmm. then i think that that can be really interesting as a narrative device where all of a sudden the players are just like yo our cleric's broken right like he's not working we definitely can't fight anything yeah we have to be way stealthier going through these caves trying to escape whatever 
you know, there's a, instead of an anti-magic field, there's just like an anti-theology field here or something Ooh. like that. Actually, I need to write that down. That That's sounds really straight good. out of like Blue Medusa. You know, yeah, I mean, it sounds straight out of like some Patrick. Yeah, dude, stuff. there you just you enter the, the you enter the chamber and the cavern is crisscrossed with anti-church spirals, right? Oh yeah, like dude, no all the <laughs> can no longer communicate. Yeah, no, I like that. I think that would be great. Yeah. But yeah, as, as like a one-off thing, I think that's good. But just you know, as uh, as like a. I don't know. As as a DM discretion thing, I think that that makes it a more of an interesting diversion than it does like a rule that you would implement. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Because you're right. Players are going to riot. Right, right. I don't think – I wouldn't – you know, I wouldn't want it to be too punishing. It's yeah. just like a fighter – you could have a bad night of rolling as a fighter and your life sucks, right? Like mm -hmm. you're – your game night is awful. Same thing for like rogue or any melee class. If you're a wizard or a cleric, right? Like you're on a hundred percent of the time. Like you could roll bad for damage. And I mean, I guess you know they do have some spells that that require attack rolls and stuff. But yeah. for the most part, right? It's it's guaranteed, right? Your heal is yeah. guaranteed. Your um... yeah. And since since they've uh, updated all that stuff to make it just like spell attacks right and mm -hmm. rolled it all into your primary modifier anymore like there's no more of this like make a melee touch attack <laughs> to land this just like inflict wounds or whatever and you're you're like as a wizard you're like rolling with like a minus two to the roll right, to try yeah. and like tag this thing because your dm points out that you're like not trained or whatever you know it's oh, crazy dude yeah having good old uh just not being proficient and stuff yeah exactly and you know touch attacks just, or whatever yep yep <laughs> those were the days no, uh, those were the days but, but uh, yeah, I mean, you've played in some games. I've been it, implementing this kind of like universal sort of wild magic thing. Yeah. Um. And I mean, I enjoy it. I don't know. I <laughs> I hope <laughs> you seem to have I, players that sign up for it, right? Like, it's not like you're seeing a total uh, shift away from magics altogether, right? No, I don't think not. Not so far, you know. Um, yeah. I had I had someone I in this new group that I had everybody was really excited that I was doing uh wild, like a wild magic for everybody. Um Dom again really felt the wrath of it in the beginning because I was trying to do a thing where it's like if you're if you don't make the caster roll, which is just like uh yeah. you know 10 plus the spell level, yeah. then the caster spell level just, check. Yeah, caster level check, right? If you don't make it, then the spell doesn't go off, and that's brutal and I feel very bad about that Dom and I'm sorry. That was too much. But mm. I think that some weird stuff should happen if you don't make the caster level check, right? So, uh, also, also, wings above too has has been on the receiving end of some of those as well for a while. He had the good old um, thing where he couldn't read anymore, but instead he ate by he read by eating things. Like if it, if he wanted to understand something, he had to like eat the piece of paper. But then he understood it. Didn't matter what language it was in. So that was fun. You know, that's a fun one. I think. It's mm -hmm, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's actually just quite good, right? You just get like something that continually can 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 continually scribe everything for you, and then you can just know all the things very right. quickly. Right. No, absolutely. So it's kind of like a yeah. monk, not monkey's paw, sort of. It's like a weirdo mm -hmm. blessing and a curse at the same time, right? Yeah. I have to eat to read. Um. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's I think we need more of that and I think there would be a cool I think that there could be an interesting way especially using like some flaw and bond kind of stuff where maybe you have like prayer points and this was like a scheme that I was thinking of maybe you have like some kind of like prayer point thing but then like to replenish your prayer points you have to like you know spend your downtime doing something related to like the church or like you have to do things to uh stay in favor at the church right yeah. um like donating x amount of wealth or like building like monuments like if you build a monument to your deity somewhere or like um casting like a specific kind of spell i think one of my favorite spells in fifth edition is ceremony yeah right not just because I like the band ceremony, but because uh, it's a it's a cool spell, right? Where you can like yeah, I'm a big a marriage fan. or like a funeral, and it's just it's just cool, right? It would be sweet yeah. if like you could do that and that like restored your prayer points, and then you could spend them on spells or something. I think that would be really fun, and then it would make it so it's like 
the divine casting is very very different than uh arcane casting right yeah yeah I, th- I would like to see a little bit of a separation between the arcane and divine just like mechanically how they work and then how you how somebody might be able to tie that into like the narration right and the story um I know there's somebody was doing a thing out there getting real crazy using like like magic cards, you know, like like MTG cards for uh some kind of like arcane spell casting variant using Magic the Gathering cards and stuff. I have no idea. Oh, thanks. Thanks Wings Above for for I'm glad you're enjoying the wild magic kind of stuff. And then too what you were saying um about you know faith is a very different thing in a world where people are little literally empowered by their gods right and you know that's that's always been a main thing in D D is that um there's this entire pantheon of deities and they all exist right undoubtedly and um they all uh uh you know have a very direct influence over the world and have the capacity to like break that wall I think a lot of the time, at least whenever I run a game, you know, I, lately I don't even really use the D&D Pantheon that much anymore. Um, it's it's a little bit more, you know, people are more unsure. They're a little bit more agnostic when they come to uh, the deities of, of the world, right? Like, you know, there's still clerics and there's still people worshiping and doing stuff and gaining powers from them. But, uh, you know, there's nobody to really confirm that... Uh, that's where your power's coming from, you know? And I think that's kind of a uh, little cynical and dark kind of part. Add a little bit of extra grit and, uh, uh, you know, darkness to your game if you like that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the uh, Wings Above was saying about the Warlock patron, right? Where the Warlock patron is uh, wants you to do stuff for them. You know, I think that would be, I think that would be cool. I think that the warlock patron thing should come into play more. I think that they should make a warlock patron table. Um, with, that's just like a list of demands from, from your patron, right? Or like, uh, uh, at, at a certain level, like whenever you get your next, uh, patron ability. So that would be like third level and sixth level, right? And ninth level, um, you have to do like a specific task for your patron. I think it should be written in there and it should kind of be like a hard, almost like a hard and fast rule. I think that would make, uh, I think that would give DMs a lot to work with. You know, they could kind of jump off of that and spitball and come up with something really cool. And uh, I think players would kind of like enjoy that too. And maybe be a little bit hesitant about what they uh, get themselves into. Yeah, I would be a fan of that. You know, I, I know that's kind of uh, beyond the scope of the cleric discussion, but I think yeah. I think comparing any other spellcaster mm-hmm. in fifth edition to the warlock is really interesting because I personally think that warlock is like probably one of the best done classes. Yeah. Um, for me, where just like you, you get a very small pool of things that are, you know, uh, on you know some sort of like timer or cooldown system or whatever, and the rest of the stuff is just kind of like yeah, you get to pick off of this list, but then this is just like shit that's always working. And these just are your like infernal powers or whatever. And then Mm -hmm. all of the rest of the stuff kind of revolves around this different idea of balance. And I think that that, um, for me, that really works in fifth edition. Whereas the, you know, comparing and contrasting that to the cleric exactly as, as you're doing is, is really interesting. Yeah. Um, Because I I think that's, you know, Channel Divinity is actually one of the things about the Cleric that I like the least. Mm -hmm. I understand that they wanted to give the class its own kind of like resource, right? And most classes have their own resource, whether it's based to the class um, or whether it runs through like a particular subclass. Most of them are going to have a resource, right? And you get this. Whatever, whatever your class points are, you get this class points resource X amount of times per day, yeah. except we call that long rest now, which is fine. But you get like <laughs> X amount of them per long rest, and then you can do these things, and then sometimes there will be a like heavy use of air quotes here. There will be a decision point because sometimes your class point fuels ability A, but sometimes it fuels ability B. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, as Wings was was talking about earlier, a lot of the time with a cleric, there's just like one of these that's better than the others, right? right? And so you just do that thing. And so like if you're playing probably like most of the normal campaigns in at least of the pre-generated ones, right? The the ones in fifth edition that you can just go to your local game shop and buy and please do so instead of supporting them, you know, via purchase on Amazon. Um, <laughs> yeah. But just like if, you know, if you buy a pre-generated campaign, your cleric is likely not turning undead. Right. And not only because turning undead as written is like not clear what it does. <laughs> right. That's like one of the worst. Yeah kind of like clarified abilities in fifth edition, but just like you're probably doing the other thing. Cause most other, just like most of the um, like subclass ones end up being cooler and or better and or both for fifth edition. So you're probably just doing that instead. Right. And so then, you know, there's kind of this, well, you know, I have it, but I'll never actually use it. And so, well, it's like, okay, well, why do you have it? Why does it work off of the same point system? Why is it that you're like, why is it that if you're like a tempest cleric, your deity will allow you to like rebuke an attacker with thunder damage once, but then won't allow you to just like turn that room of skeletons. <laughs> you know, this like this this sort of thing doesn't really, I don't know. To to me, it seems a little a little silly, and I would rather see turn undead just be like a thing that happens, and then if they get other class abilities, that they can only do those so many times. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that sounds pretty good. I think that sounds pretty legit. Man, I hope. I hope they're listening in and they start making clerics awesome. You know? Um, shoot. I think we're getting to that point where we start talking about uh, clerics and multi-classing. Yeah, it sounds good. Because cleric is one of the most easily multi-classable classes, like historically. And I think in 5th mm -hmm. edition... That still kind of holds true, although 5th edition, um, I think you see a lot more people trying to play a charisma character in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Because they just think it's, like, more important. Or just the charisma classes, quote-unquote, are, like, very popular, right? I mean, yeah. I think if you went down the list, you would find that Bard, Warlock, and Paladin make up a really large share of characters. Yeah. Uh, like, it, it, at least in some... Everybody you know, loves Warlock because level pairing. Yeah, they want to hang out with the demons and devils. And yeah, stuff too, you know? yeah, exactly. So. But but clerics clerics end up multi classing really really well, um, and part of that is because the proficiencies that they get are really nice, and part of that also is because like whenever you are playing a cleric, you don't really have to have the highest wisdom score ever if you just want a couple levels of cleric. You know, if you're True. if you are a holy man, but you also do some other stuff too, you can just take some spells like aid. You know, you can yep. you can take that. Uh, you can take, um, you know, bless. You can take guidance. You could take bane if you wanted to. Although you know that one's got a save on it, but you can take some stuff that just does good things without needing to have the highest wisdom ever. That's true. No, I think you're um, onto something there. Yeah. Um, let's start at the top. I'm and for these, you know, I'm less interested in talking about like mechanically what's going to be available to them mm -hmm. as far as like stuff. I'm I kind of want to hear the story of of these guys, right? Um, so we got to start at the top with artificer, but let's also kind of <laughs> there's going to be a thing, right? With clerics, can we do it and make it so that I don't know if we can't where it's just like. It, the person is just a cleric of that type of thing, right? Like I'm a cleric of fighters yep, and I worship definitely. cord, you know? Yep. So if we start at the top with the cleric artificer, yeah. What's that guy's story looking like? You're probably just born in like sigil. And I know it's like sigil, but they pronounce it wrong in like the official wizard stuff, but you're probably just born there. Right. Yeah. And you're just like a clockwork priest. Yeah, that would be cool. Like the clockwork mechanists, all that sort of yep, thing. Exactly. And so you're you're probably your holy symbol is just like um instead of having like a pocket watch with a face, it just just doesn't have that and it just is continually ticking into eternity. It is just the gears. Right? Yeah, just some gears or like um yeah. having like <laughs> some kind of crazy like necklace thing that's just like the swinging yep. pendulum of a grandfather clock. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good. And like your morning ritual of like prayer is actually just you winding this thing, right? Would be cool. Let's just, just go even farther on that. Just being a warforged artificer cleric yeah. from the clockwork mechanist yep. is yeah. probably the pinnacle. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> if if you, that's legit, if you got warforged in your game and you're doing that sort of thing, I like warforged. 
stylistically. I like mm-hmm. having them being like leftover machines that have been repurposed from their like original purpose. I think that's like a fun part of the Warforge. I don't want to end up going on to a whole Warforge thing, but mm-hmm. like being a Warforge that's still built for war, I think is kind of lame. I think it is much cooler to be a Warforge who like was in the war and then got repurposed and now it's like a farmer robot and has like, you know, two giant sickles for their arms or something. I don't know. I, I like that a lot more than just being a fighting robot. But anyway, before I go on that whole Yeah, spiel, for people that think uh, that think Warforged don't really fit in the game, just like do yourself a favor and look up like the clockwork nirvana of Mechanus, right? Which yeah. is just like in the Great Wheel cosmology. It just is like the LN plane, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. just it's just out there. There's there's mechs. They're running around. Totally. Totally. Those uh, things that come from the clockwork mechanist, the um, Modrons. Not are you talking the about just like the inevitables? The, the inevitables, dude. Yeah, those yeah, are the inevitables. Those are some ballers. Definitely. It's like imagine if we had angels, except instead of being just like dudes with wings, they're just mechs. <laughs> they're just dudes with gears. Uh, yeah. No, I, I I greatly enjoy the inevitables. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to cleric a barbarian. There mm, we go. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's your shaman. And we talked about that guy in the barbarian episode, yeah. I think. But um, what are some other versions of that of that hero? I think you have the cleric barbarian that isn't tribal, but is actually like traveling with um, maybe just like some... Uh, some like raiders or something like that or traveling with like a particularly nasty like war band right and so you don't have this you don't have this kind of like shamanistic wisdom to it but instead you just are the battle priest yeah right and you're like raging with everybody else yeah it makes me think of i I don't know if you've ever seen any of vikings i watched just like a little bit of it but there's like uh... vikings you got that floki energy i think ah i wasn't even thinking of floki but they have that one dude who's like the the priest that they capture and take with them. The actual and, priest? Yeah. You're talking about Apple Stan. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. That guy's like make... when he grows his hair out, like in season two or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That would be different. Yeah. I mean, it, you're kind of just doing Vikings at that point, but I think it's, yeah. I think that's still fair. I think it's Vikings probably not that is far off. Fair game. Yeah. Um, I'd rather have somebody surprise me with something from Vikings than maybe like Game of Thrones or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, oh man, Cleric Bard mm-hmm. singing in the choir. That's yeah. that's what I immediately think of is you got that dude who's like singing in the choir. Could also go like really hard uh, evangelical kind of dude. There's like your proselytizer mm-hmm. kind of guy right off the top. Yeah, I'm I'm standing by my suggestion from your from your bard one though. You got that eulogist in there, right? Ooh, yeah. That was just like darker. If you need one that's got like a, a darker theme, um, you know, there's there's a couple of those. You can get. I think wasn't the the dirge singer was just a a third edition. Yeah, man, dirge singer class, right? Raising pretty cool. Like they were like a necromancer bard kind of thing. Yeah, I think that was it. You were you were kind of like a bard, but instead of helping people, you were just applying kind of like penalties to enemies yeah yeah oh man wings above recommending that vinland saga we also my my buddy dane also recommended uh that so it's it's on the list and thank you for reinforcing that yeah um who else we got bard i think there's a lot of room to go with the bard right yeah because both of the classes kind of like want to be a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a, I don't want to say a bit role player, but they want to be part of the supporting cast to a certain extent. You know, they want to be helping out somebody who maybe is doing the direct advancement of the plot. Yeah. And so I think blending the two of them makes sense thematically as well as mechanically. Yeah. Yeah. Wings above. If you want to jump in this discord dude and just jump in on this, you're, you're more than welcome to, I believe you have the, role set up that you can jump in the vip and come and hang out should you be so inclined um cleric and cleric the ultimate cleric um what's next cleric druid right that's yep. that's the next one on the list mm-hmm. um we've got like that forest god 
got that you know? forest god power. I'm trying to think of something that goes a little bit, uh, or like weather. You know, you could do like some weather kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, controlling the weather with like divine energy rather than like the arcane is kind of cool. Kind of like that's like very classic magical. Yeah kind of stuff right is there's uh, there's probably a good sailor in there mm -hmm. where you like worship umberly right or something like that or just like a god or goddess of like storms and shit Mm -hmm. and you're just chilling as like a sailor right and you've got some druid levels you've got some cleric levels going on the cleric for like your reverence you know the druid for like whatever it is that you're doing is is you know the the actual like sailor bit or something like that yeah yeah there's what I was trying to think of this the other day from Tales from Earth, Tales of Earth Sea. Um, it's a book series. They have a great mm-hmm. name for their people who control the weathers for the weather yeah. on the ships. And I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's good. Mm. Um, I've I've just thought up a, a better one actually. Instead of like a sailor, you're just the lighthouse keeper. That's mm, what you are. Yeah. You're the cleric druid. That's what that character is. That would be a good one. That's that's a great character, lighthouse keeper. I'm in that. Yeah. I'm into that a lot. Sam's gonna run that. I was gonna game. say that's that's Sam's next character right there. Yeah. Um, what's after Druid? Got that fighter, cleric, cleric fighter. Yeah. I mean, just doesn't get any better. That's yeah. You can't go wrong. I mean, it has the best class, which is fighter. Yeah. Um, mixed. This was there. just paladin before it was paladin, right? Yeah, yeah, for real. But. If you want to, if you want to run a paladin, but don't want all of the stuff that a paladin has because you want cooler stuff, probably just run that cleric fighter. Do you think you could run a cleric fighter who is like a dex based fighter and does like archery stuff? I don't know what that really means, but uh, breaking down that having like heavy armor from being a cleric, you know, and also being a fighter and just go in like dex or something, mm-hmm. or like. Uh, doing oh man you could do like um i don't know how this would really shake out that might be kind of going more into like monk sort of stuff but uh doing like a pit fighter like a very like religious like pit fighter type dude mm-hmm. um, yeah that's like good. gladiator yep. style stuff might be kind of fun somehow but like not superstitious, just overtly religious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, oh man, uh, fourth edition, which you know it's fourth edition, but the Avenger, right? The like sneak cla- the sneak attacking, like holy man with a great sword. Yeah, um, you could probably, you might have a better chance of pulling off something like that with cleric fighter than like cleric rogue, for example. But I guess we'll get mm-hmm. to cleric rogue when we talk about it. Yeah, I think if you if you want to be that sort of a thing, I actually think that cleric fighter just gives you a lot more than cleric rogue does because I think just uh just I know you don't want a lot of mechanical talk, but just the nitty gritty yeah. of the way sneak attack is written in this edition yeah. means that just like you really can't do it with a lot of the really fun shit that you'd like to. I know. So why not just be a fighter and get action surge instead, right? Like that just <laughs> sounds cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, I agree to that. Uh, after Fighter, is it Monk? Am I missing something? Yeah, we got Monk up next. Cleric Monk would be pretty sick. I, I really yeah, actually want to play this character coming up. You have like the, you know, you've got like the, the ability to just be, you know, like the cloistered um, scholar, warrior, kind of like secluded individual, right? So you've got... Um, you know, the, the guy who has really only ever lived in his monastery mm-hmm. and has both has both studied and done, um, you know, practical training. Yeah. Um, but you've got other ones, too. I don't think that's the only one out there because I think that's not doing the monk enough service. Right. Because that's a very versatile class. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I like monk. And, you know, I think that there's some other ways out there to play monk other than just them yeah. being like a foreign person coming from somewhere else mm-hmm. and you yeah. know just doing the whole kung fu yep thing. you could roll that gladiator out here and it's just the pugilist right yeah. and you're like a gladi like a spiritual gladiator mm-hmm. and, but you just box people right so yep. at some point at some point probably like the cleric the cleric monk is just 54 year old mike tyson 
which is still a top three character. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm for that. That sounds like a great character. Anytime I get to pretend to be Mike Tyson, I know I'm having a better day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I would like to rock uh, the monk, the Path of Mercy monk, and maybe like throw some cleric on top of that mm-hmm. and do this like acupuncturist, yeah. right? This person who uh, does like acupuncture and like bone setting as a form of healing. And uh, they also only heal people in downtime and they don't like flurry of blows and heal which is kind of i think the whole point of the path of mercy monk but uh whatever screw that um maybe i don't need them after all and i can just be you know i can just go straight monk with uh with like a little bit of cleric for the for the healing that i would like to do on the side yeah um yeah but just like other kinds of forms of healing that's not Mm -hmm. necessarily magical healing just like herbal teas yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Um, my current is yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that is like a very you see that in martial arts actually a lot. The idea, like, uh, uh I've heard people that practice capoeira say that. Um, that yeah. that there's a lot of kicking in capoeira because, mm-hmm. uh, the hands are for healing, right? That's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. And I like that. That's that's actually a really good basis for a character. If you if you have nothing else going on, like if you're trying to train a group of new D and D players, right, and mm-hmm. you're trying to explain to them how to formulate a character that's a character and not just a bag of stats, yeah, on a on a page, then just pointing out that just like okay, your character is kind of like fundamental ideology is that the hands are for healing, yeah. And so that's what you do, and then when you need to fight someone, you kick, and that's like your that's your character's ideology, right? And so think about that, mm-hmm. because that also inspires good kind of like in the moment of combat role play. I think, yeah, yeah, right. Just letting people get more creative, getting good descriptors. I like that. I think that's very true. Um, after monk is you got that paladin. paladin. Oh God, yeah. Uh, can we just skip this one yeah we can kind of skip that one it's a little bit less interesting a little bit obvious i mean it's kind of still the same thing right yeah they're just yeah thematically yeah i mean i i think the interesting things here are just like you can say things like well i took one first and then kind of converted to the other way of thinking i was a paladin and i still had that training but i became more of a pacifist so now i'm more of a cleric and i'm not you know so inclined to use force to solve my problems or I was a holy man until I saw my village raised, and now I'm a paladin because I've, you know, realized that there are evils in this world that need to be kind of, you know, uh, to have justice meted out to them. Yeah. Right. I think you just nailed the, the that character exactly. The two options yeah. for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because th- there's got to be a reason that you switched, right? Right. Yeah. You... And it shouldn't just be because I wanted this ability, right? That's stupid. Right. No, absolutely. That's really dumb. Yeah. Oh man, what's next? Is that ranger? ranger? And that one is underrated. That one's that archer you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, could rock that archer. You got that Honestly, wisdom score. Yeah, this is uh in uh Saving Private Ryan, like that <laughs> sniper who's like always just whispering a prayer before Ooh. taking a shot. Yeah, that's my favorite part of that movie for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. great character. I I like that guy. That's a, lot. a good character. Yeah, that that's a really good one. I would totally mm-hmm. go for that one. Yeah. But you've got you've got you know to a- ignore the more martial sides of the ranger. You've kind of got some of that crossover to the druid thing, right? Where you're like connected to the land in a holistic way. Yeah. Um. So you're maybe you're maybe a cleric to serve a, a farming community or something like that. But you're a ranger also to serve the farming community. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? you could do. Uh... I imagine maybe like this tracker kind of character mm-hmm. too. Yeah. This guy who just like tracks things and people and um, is all about that sort of thing. And maybe like um, like makes trails and stuff like that. Carves paths. I mean, that's kind of just classic ranger stuff. Um, yeah. Like people get lost in the wild. Somebody's got to go find them. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You ever see the movie The Hunted with Tommy Lee Jones? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, where he's hunting Benicio del Toro and stuff, yeah. and he's like his teacher. 
And, you know, that that's essentially you're just Tommy Lee Jones sort of, but maybe with like a little bit more of uh, like a deity backing you up or something. I think mm-hmm. that could be pretty cool. I mean, he, Tommy Lee Jones is pretty much just a ranger, but uh, yeah, that's the idea. Let's nail these last couple out real fast. They're all the spellcasters. No, we got Rogue. Cleric mm-hmm. Rogue, man. Um, oh, dude. Waiting on this one, though. Yeah, what you got? You got something for that? It's that infiltrator. This is uh they had one of these in what was it, Complete Warrior, and they had like the Night Song Infiltrator or something like that. Yeah, and that you was just a belong, thing. Yeah, you you just belong to uh an order um you know that that works for or that is devoted to like a god of trickery or a god of secrets or something like that. So the rogue is like part of your training, but fundamentally you are a cleric, but you use your abilities in different ways, right? I thought you were going to bust out that uh, deep cut. Like I forgot some of these books existed and then I yeah. like read a list of them the other day, but uh, yeah. like the Fiendish Codex part two from three, five, right? Yeah, Where you have That's a the, uh... It's an expensive book. You go and try and get it right now. Really? I think so. Yeah. No way. Not a lot of copies in circulation. We'll have to talk about that. I, I should look into that. I have mm-hmm. probably like six copies of it. Not really. I don't <laughs> actually have six. That would be amazing though. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, there was another version. What the what the hell were they called? Okay, the the one class was called the Hellbreaker, right? Which is just the most like edgiest, awesomest yeah, name that you could have for a uh, prestige class. But oh, yeah. uh, they were all about like breaking into hell, right? Like infiltrating mm-hmm. the layers of hell and then getting back out, which is pretty sick. Yeah. Yep. Um, being like a specialist and that sort of thing. But dude, yep. oh, there's a very specific image in my mind. Um, Wait, I think maybe it is the Night Song Infiltrator. What was the other one? There was a fighter one and there was a cleric one. And yeah, the so picture the, is the, the guy's Nightsong... going down the staircase and the okay, dude that's with the a, sword is badass. Yeah, that's, that's a different one. He, Yeah, that dude is an absolute baller. <laughs> the Night Song ones were different. It was on like the page prior or something and it was a woman and a half orc like crouched around the side of a building. And that had the infiltrator and the enforcer. The ones you're talking about, I forget the name of that one, but that was like a religious order of like infiltrators dedicated to just bopping necromancers and undead. Yeah. Which is just good. More people should do that. Oh man. That thing was awesome. What was that guy called? I'll have to, I'll be, I'll be looking for that one for a hot minute, but uh, I keep getting, I'm I'm just going to go get my copy. (laughs) Hang on. I'm, I'm gone for 60 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I keep getting distracted about things that are not cleric related. Oh gosh, guys. I really want to know what that is. If you, if anybody knows the art that I'm talking about, it's really cool. Um, what would it have been called? I don't know, but yeah, I mean, Rogue Cleric definitely has a lot of stuff. Like you could be, uh, I think one of the Three Musketeers, right? Was that Aramis, or was it Athos? It was one of them. Um was like he was like a kind of roguish and but then also like a uh priest that's pretty pretty iconic i think it's aramis but uh that would be cool or you have like someone who of course uh used to be a thief and then became a man of the cloth which is like a good it's probably a pretty good story to pursue or uh, I've been kind of looking to play this character who used to be maybe like a cleric and uh, was like a protector of a temple and then just realized you could make a lot more money as an adventurer and just kind of like sets their life aside um, as a cleric and then just goes and starts like uh, robbing places and doing kind of like some bad stuff. Or not necessarily bad stuff, but like maybe does like Robin Hood stuff. That, that would be a good uh, redeeming thing, right? Where it's like leaves behind stops being friar tuck and then starts going full robin hood that would be cool that's like a good thing to fill in with maybe like the gnome pantheon of like them getting like some like good natured trickery going on or something like that right yeah you know i called the book wrong the ones that we were thinking about were an adventurer not warrior 
but that is the shadow bane stalker and the shadow bane infiltrator yeah it is oh my and those God. are sick yeah that artwork we should we should uh people should look up that artwork if they don't know it yeah that's that's one of the sickest pictures shadow bane inf in infiltrator uh stalker is one i forget what the other one is but yeah they're, they're on the same page it's the same yeah, they, yeah exactly oh man that is a piece that's of art. so goddamn good i love that oh, oh jesus that guy has one of the best swords and like the best armor and like yeah. best yep. hood armor hood yep. plus armor combination there it yep. that might be one of my favorite pictures in all of D. &D. that's in complete mm -hmm. adventure yeah that's awesome yeah hm. so so sweet plus like whatever they're going down into this like whole mm-hmm warren that's great. definitely just got like a crypt that's like a like a good crypt yeah uh then next is all the spell casting classes yep. right ross so that all yep. just gets lumped on in together if you're gonna yeah. be a cleric spell caster i mean i i was like uh was it the mystic theurge or something that was another yeah. three yeah. five one where you just got that big d uh blend of arcane and divine i think yeah. uh Brian played a really great character. No, I think he was just a cleric of lore. Yep. That was, that guy was cool. Mm -hmm. Whenever we did the start of Deep Carbon Observatory, that, that game with the witches, that was good. Yep. Yep. Liked yep. his character a lot. And that was almost kind of like spellcastery. Yeah, you just get that knowledge domain and then you blend it with something else that kind of makes sense. Like, I think you can go with like a divination wizard there or something like that that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um I actually think sorcerer is harder to blend than wizard. I think cleric blends yeah. thematically with wizard a little bit better where like, you've just like kind of done this scholarly thing yeah, for a, a while, study, maybe doing yeah. that archivist kind of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. I, I think that blends better. I think it's harder to do the sorcerer a bit, but you could maybe do like the, um, like the, the draconic origin sorcerer and, you know, make up a bullshit reason why that class makes sense at all or something. <laughs> You could do like you could do like draconic origin sorcerer and then like be a cleric of Bahamut. Yeah. And yeah. like do, just yeah, go exactly. like straight dragon god stuff. Maybe. Or we could roll it back and you could just be a warforged cleric and also have that clockwork Ooh. sorcerer going on. Dang, that's pretty cool. That could be yeah. sweet. Didn't mm -hmm. even think about that. Yeah. Yeah, they have they have so many crazy sorcerer background things now that I have not even not even started to chew over yet. I'm busy yeah, reading like crazy modules instead. Just like playing a sorcerer, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. I played, I think I played maybe two sorcerers in my yeah. 20 years of D&D. Of D &D. Yeah, I actually played my first one ever of all time in your game, Blue Medusa, recently. Yeah. And I didn't dislike it, but the whole time I was just kind of like mad that I wasn't actually a wizard, which I think is the whole point of running a sorcerer. Yeah. It's just so you can like kind of express some of that angst. But then additionally... um, I don't know. I just feel like with Sorcerer, like every time you go to cast a spell and you still have a spell slot and then you look over and you have like sorcery points on the side, you're like, God damn, why didn't you guys just make it work with sorcery points as a casting ingredient? That would have just been like a cooler <laughs> gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. Just give me just give me spell points. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Oh, boy. Warlock is the one here that's different. Yeah, because I think there are a couple of attacks you can take that get interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a warlock and a cleric of the same patron. Yeah, but oh. maybe these things are at odds, dude. Yeah, that that would be fun, right? Where yeah. uh, you're like this holy man who then is just like gets possessed by like a demon or something, mm -hmm. or like yep, uh, or the that, other way around. Maybe maybe really you're cool. disingenuously a holy man because you've been you have like a pact to begin with, and you're like infiltrating the clergy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you're just like a holy man and you've trapped a genie now, right? Isn't that the, isn't that one of the new patrons? Well, you like, you like serve a genie and you play Pokemon for him. Oh, that's Cause cool. he wants to be the Pokemon master. So you go out and try and catch them all. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the other things. And you find like all of God's creations and then you get an ability from each one. Oh, that's cool. It's actually a little bit more anal uh, like analogous to like, a final fantasy blue mage i think okay where you get like an ability from something you capture yeah 
but I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much. I'm, I'm probably not that that's not at the top of my list of stuff to play right now. A cleric who accidentally gets too close to their deity. That's cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Well, thanks for jumping in Ross. Yeah. A little yeah, bit over to today. Be. That was fun. I couldn't have done it without you making this episode 12, a little bit more magical. And uh, thanks everybody for watching and let's keep decomposing and we'll do this again soon guys later beep beep i hope it ended ross i think it's done